Miracy. Hi, I'm Ellen Finkelstein, and you're listening to Making It. I run a business called Change the World Marketing, and we help online entrepreneurs get better results from their emails. My father was an entrepreneur, and I didn't know that until he was in his 60s looking for a new job, and he asked me to write his resume. So I didn't grow up thinking anything about entrepreneurship. I went to college and majored in history and minored in math, which was just strange, with no real concept of what I would do after that. Now, what I did do after that was become a teacher of transcendental meditation. And that was, in a sense, an entrepreneurial job because We had to do publicity and we basically had a little business of teaching TM, even though we were doing it for the TM organization. So I did have that experience. But after that, I worked myself up into corporate America as a benefits manager in a bank. And then I had kids. (laughs) And so that turned me into an entrepreneur. I started off by doing technical editing and then writing books. So it wasn't really being an entrepreneur. I was doing books for Wiley and Sons and McGraw-Hill, big publishers. I started a website as an author platform, started writing blog posts, started an email list, and started finally creating my own eBooks, which were PDFs that I sold to my email list. And it was such an eye-opener. My biggest book was 1,300 pages at the end, the 17th edition. And I got a 10% royalty on the wholesale price. So let's say at $15, I got $1.50 per book. Now, it sold a lot of books. That was one of some books that got me the down payment of my house. (laughs) So I don't knock it. But I did realize that I could write an ebook, sell it for $20 and keep $19 of it. And that was a real eye opener. And that was really how I started my journey into being an entrepreneur. Working for myself was interesting, and I started off as a technical editor on books about Excel, various things. And when we were in Israel, I learned AutoCAD, which is a drafting program. And so I was asking for more work, more technical editing work from the publisher. And they mentioned that they were looking for an author because they'd had an author who'd skipped out of a book. In those days, the publishers bought shelf space in a bookstore and they had already bought the space. So they were kind of desperate. And I said, could I try? And they said, okay. And so they gave me my first book. It was called AutoCAD for Dummies Quick Reference. I don't think they do quick references anymore, but it was in the For Dummies series. And then I had an editor there that gave me some other editing projects and kind of developed me so that I could do a bigger book. And that was how I got the AutoCAD Bible. The Bible is their series of really comprehensive books, you know, 800 pages and up. And right now, I don't think they will ever give that to one person because it's just too much. But they just gave it to me, even though I didn't have a reputation in the field, but they knew I could write. They knew I gave things in on time. They knew I knew the topic. So they gave me this huge book and it was pretty amazing. Once I had the experience, I realized that I could teach. And partly maybe because I had knowledge of PowerPoint, I felt very comfortable creating slides. And so I would teach webinars. And that was how I started teaching. And it was amazing to have people actually sign up for my first courses. I definitely had a reputation with AutoCAD because of the book I had written. And through that, I was able to branch out to these other areas, to PowerPoint which was my first area other than AutoCAD, where I taught classes and created little courses. And it was amazing to see the effect of emailing people because that was really all I did. I emailed people and invited them and they came. And that was how I learned the value of long-term email marketing. I also did a lot of blogging and that developed an authority, a trust, People felt that I had the expertise and I would send out an email that said, here's my latest blog post. And I just did that weekly for years. And that really developed a loyal following among my email subscribers so that I was able to sell my courses. I felt like I made it when I realized that 
I could get really great results from my emails. And funnily enough, the first great results I got were for other people. I was doing affiliate marketing for other people. So for example, promoting Miracy was a good example. The first time I did it was a big aha moment for me because I ended up being the number two affiliate for opt-ins. And that gave me an amazing opportunity to have the Miracy companies promote me back. And so I had built up my list slowly and it got to about 10,000, I guess. But that experience really of promoting that Miracy launch was probably the moment. (laughs) I do find certainly among my coaching clients that there are people who feel uncomfortable promoting other people, or they just don't understand the value of creating these relationships. And it takes time. You have to build them up, but it's really hard to go it by yourself to actually try to build a business all on your own. And so partnering has been a big part of my success. I remember my first webinar because the experience of speaking to a screen where you can't see anybody was so weird. (laughs) It was like, are they there? Are they listening? Are they out there? Are they experiencing? It was just strange to speak out into the ether, so to speak. But I kept speaking. I kept doing it and people liked it. And so it seemed to work. But I do remember this little bit of inner gasp that I was just speaking and people out there were listening. I couldn't hear them or anything or see them. It was very strange. Of course, I'm used to it now, but I think it is important to note how strange the first webinars felt to people, whether they had taught in person before or hadn't taught before, how strange it was and how amazing the technology is, how world-changing it is that we can teach to people all around the world. I would say the biggest lesson that I've learned is that, first of all, you have to always keep learning. And even though I know a lot about online business, I've still had to learn about strategy and copy and creating relationships with people, all of those things. Having an online business is not just the technical side. There's the strategy, there's the relationships. So I've had to always keep on learning and always keep on tweaking and never give up. And I think that's been a big part of what I've learned. If you're listening to this podcast, I do want you to know that you probably have expertise and knowledge that people out there need and want. And you shouldn't hide it from the world. You shouldn't feel insignificant or unimportant. Just go out there and do the best job you can to get that knowledge out and help people. And in general, they will respond. Yes, you might have to tweak your copy or tweak your strategy or all of that, but do go out there to give. And that's also been a big part of how I've structured my business is when you give, then you receive. And so maybe because of my experience meditating, there's some silence inside all the time, but then I take that inner silence and inner bliss and I want to share it with others. I want to give it to others. And that comes out in teaching and helping people. So just go out there and do it. I'm Ellen Finkelstein, and you've been listening to Making It. You can find me at changetheworldmarketing.com. And if you click on the freebies link, you can find lots of great information for free. Making It is part of the Mira CFM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Course Lab and Once Upon a Business. This episode of Making It was produced by Danny Bermont and Jeff Govertson. Cynthia Lamb is supervising producer. Danny Eni, that's me, is executive producer. Post-production by Post Office Sound. To catch the great episodes that are coming up on Making It, please give us a follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It's the best way to help us get these ideas to more people. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.